thrilled, Miss Pendry. <gasps> the Raven's heir. Soon as one of them's caught, another one takes his place. Hey, Harold, have you read this? Harold? Harold? Harold, you hear me? This is no time for fun and games. And where's Harold? Harold? Well, there's another guard back there unconscious. That's probably him. The Eye of the Sphinx. Where is it? It's there. Oh, good. Then he hasn't got it yet. You mean... the Raven's heir? Shh! Turn it off. He's gonna steal the Eye. But how do you know? Doesn't matter. All that matters is that we catch him. Do you understand? Yeah, but... Do you understand? You and me, mate, we'll be heroes. All right, now, we just have to... What? Halt! Stop! You're under arrest! I don't have time to play. I'm on duty. Haha, <laughs> you're funny. But you don't look like a real cop. You don't even have a revolver. What's your name, boy? My name is Matthew Miller. And where are you from, Matthew Miller? Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, but my mom and I live in England now. She's taking care of some rich old lady. We're on our way to Venice at the moment. We're taking a cruise on a big ship. Impressive. You've already seen half the world. I've spent my entire life in Switzerland. Must be really boring. And what's with the gun? What do you need it for? It's the Raven. He was gunned down, so now I need a pistol. Dead birds don't need guns. No do live ones. You don't know who the Raven is. Do you? He's the greatest burglar ever. He stole paintings from the Louvre, and those priceless eggs with gold and diamonds and stuff. And Bobby Dobbs says he replaced the crown jewels with rhinestones. I know who the Raven was, although I don't quite buy that bit about the crown jewels. 
You do know these days there are thieves far more dangerous than your old raven. Two days ago, a precious ruby was stolen from the British Museum. There was an explosion. A guard was severely injured. Really? Yeah. And do you know what the papers say? <clears throat> you talk too much, Constable. Zellner, monsieur. Anton Jakob Zellner. Or oh, did he pull a gun on you? No, monsieur. Get a move on. Inspector Legrand, it's a great honor to work with a celebrity like you. We appreciate the support of the Swiss police, but it'd be better if you'd remain seated and keep an eye on things. But, monsieur, your journey on this train is most unusual. Is it related to the burglary at the British Museum? Not in the least. And the safe? What's that for? I'll let you know if we need your help, Constable. If you'll excuse me, I'll be in the first freight car at the back of the train for the rest of the trip. I'm not here to enjoy the beautiful scenery. I... I am a good observer, and I have finely honed powers of deduction. Thanks to that? I watched the people on the platform in Zurich. I know, for example, that that man over there is a violinist. <laughs> that would be more impressive if there weren't a violin case next to him. And I believe that the gentleman in the next carriage is a German doctor on his way to Italy to take up a new position. <laughs> and what gives you that idea? There's the rod of Asclepius engraved on his cufflink. And he's carrying a German-Italian dictionary. Maybe he's just taking a holiday in Italy, following in Goethe's footsteps. Too much luggage. And no, he's not retiring to Italy either. The suitcases are too shabby for me to believe that he can afford to retire in his late fifties. All right then, Constable... Zellner. Constable Zellner. If you're such a clever fellow, what am I doing on this train? I think you're looking for someone. You're just guessing. If I were looking for someone, I wouldn't spend the trip cooped up in a freight car, now would I? Well, that would seem to indicate that you're guarding something. And what might it be? I really couldn't say. But it must be very important. Why is that? Because you are very important. They wouldn't have assigned the case to you if it were just a trifle. <laughs> Let's assume that we really are transporting something very important on this train. And let's assume that it really is my job to see that it arrives safely. Then why isn't the train crawling with pulleys? You don't want to arouse attention? Evidon. But why not? There are enough police on this train as it is. If there were more, they'd only get in each other's way. I can assure you that I'd pack every seat in every carriage of this train with police, if it were a matter of deterrence. You're saying you don't want to scare off potential thieves? Ah, you're laying a trap. That would explain why it's just me, and not the army, Nespan. All the same, I can't comment on your speculation. <laughs> your deductive powers leave much to be desired. I think we'll get along fine. You. you won't. Won't? Pardonnez-moi. I can help. And I will help. You are in my country, and I have been ordered to assist you. And that's exactly what I'll do, whether you like it or not. Not so bright, but stubborn. Your commitment speaks volumes, Zelna. But this is my show, and I don't need you. Bon voyage. But how do you know? Hello. You cheated. I did what? I saw you talking to the German doctor on the platform. He told you everything himself, and you were just pretending to put two and two together. And what of it? Do you know who that is? That's Inspector Nicholas Legrand. You have to impress him if you want to work with him. I'm going to tell on you. You'd really tell on me? To the very policeman who shot your dear Raven? Whoa. It was him? Mm-hmm. 
hunted and killed Europe's most famous burglar. That's how he got his start. I won't tell him a thing. I wouldn't either. All right, Matthew. I have to do my work now. Everyone calls me Matt. Well, except for my mom. She calls me Maddie, as if I were a little kid. Whether Legrand wants my help or not, I'll keep my eyes open. Maybe I can change his mind. This morning, I thought I wouldn't be hungry because of all the excitement. Thankfully, I bought a sandwich with me anyway. sandwich paper. That way I can carry it without making still. I'd prefer not to have to go. The napkin came with the croissant I bought at the train station. Every table has its own waste basket. Practical. in the mirror. A detective for years now I've been trying to convince my theater group to stage one of her The violinist is a good-looking fellow and he's traveling through the most beautiful mountain landscape of the world. For one can only hope that his violin is better tuned than he. Hello, sir. Hello. Are you traveling to Istanbul non-stop? No. I'll transfer in Venice to a ship. I'm on my way to Cairo. Cairo? I'm performing at a reception in the Egyptian Museum there. I'm sure your recital will be a great success. But tell me, did you notice anything unusual on the train? Anything unusual? Persons acting suspiciously, for instance. For heaven's sake. Is that cause for concern? Everything is in order, sir. We Swiss are just very cautious people. I understand. No, I didn't notice anything. Have a good trip. Thank you. Very kind of you. Thanks. Oh! oh. Pardon me. No, no, no problem. The uniform is waterproof. Uh, Mr. Lucio. Professor Edgar Lucio. Oh, a professor. Are you a scientist? No, I work at the British... You don't say. So, you were, shall we say, an eyewitness to the... No, I wouldn't... Oh, no? Well, there... There was a lot of commotion, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. There was a break-in in your museum, and it didn't concern you? Well, let's just say that nothing that's happened in the last 2,000 years concerns me. <laughs> Whatever you say. 
the famous Inspector Legrand is on this train. I imagine... Ah, uh, no. You don't know him? And you also don't know what he's doing here? No. <laughs> Why should I? Just a thought. You're a representative of the British Museum. There's a guarded safe on the train. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're trying to imply. And now, please excuse me. Just one more thing. Did you notice anything unusual on the train? Here? On the train? No. I can't say that I have. Although I did spend most of the time in my compartment. May I ask who... Of course. I'm... Oh, then. A beautiful city. Indeed. But I read... I don't want to take up it, but you do understand, don't you, that what concerns... Yeah, of course, of course. You'll get in touch if you notice anything unusual. Of course, Constable. What's this? What's the matter, sir? The door. I can't open it. Ah. We'll sort it out somehow. The compartment is locked. But I didn't lock it. I don't even have a key. I asked the steward. He was going to bring me one, but he never came back. Someone locked it. Find the steward. He needs to bring me the key immediately. Calm down, Professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't understand. All right, just... He doesn't make a very balanced impression. And he, of all people, isn't bothered by a rock. I don't believe it. I never thought I'd ever meet you. Uh, pardon me, but uh, we'd prefer... It's all right, Miss Miller. I'd like to speak to the inspector. Unfortunately, just a constable, Lady Westmacott. I'm reading The Vicarage in the Mirror right now, for the fifth time at least. That's nice, Constable... Uh, Zellner. Anton Jakob Zellner. This is my companion, Miss Miller. A pleasure. May I ask what you're doing here? Are you on holiday? Holiday? Yes, so to speak. The first and last holiday of my life. Madam? I've been writing since I was a little girl. It became my job, and now I've stopped. So, this must be a holiday. You quit, right? I have all of your books. Your detective... Then I have bad news. I... I don't understand. I'd rather not discuss my... Oh, well, fine. As a writer, you must be very observant. Am I right? I mean, you have to study the behavior of people around you to create the characters in... I solved the mystery of human nature, and since then, most people... Really? I had the impression you were eyeing me suspiciously as I came in. What do you want to know, Constable? Did you notice the man who just walked into the next carriage with a cup of tea? I did. He seemed nervous. He was waiting at the bar for the steward, and since the steward never appeared, he elected to help himself. He took two biscuits. He seems pretty young. But he's already a professor at the British Museum. Interesting. I'll have to talk to him later. Just out of courtesy, of course. Of course. Did you notice the blonde man with the violin case? <laughs> I certainly did. He introduced himself and tried to make a good impression. People like him are drawn to wealth and fame, like moths to a flame. But his charms failed on you. I know him by name. David Kreutzer. He was a drain on my friend's purse. Do you think he has a money problem? People like him always have a money problem. No matter how much you give them, they always spend twice as much and complain that they have far too little. Did you notice anyone else? What about the doctor? I notice that you've asked me about everyone, except for the inspector who went in the direction of the freight car a few minutes ago. Isn't that the Frenchman? who made his name when he caught the raven. I wouldn't quite say caught. Well, shot. Why don't you ask me about him and my theory about what he's doing here? I don't think we should discuss Inspector Legrand's investigation in public. Legrand, right. That was his name. Will he save the day again? Or 
Or will you, Constable? Are you traveling to Istanbul? No. We are on our way to Ve- As you may know, I have a penchant for archaeology. I traveled to Egypt by ship as a young woman. I see. As much as I'd like to keep- You were right, madam. I did observe you as you came in. You seemed so... Uh, eager. I... <laughs> it's been a- And this is it. I do hope so. Then grab it. Even small people can make big changes. I shall do my best. Mrs. Miller made a good impression. She wanted to protect Lady Westmacott from me, a pushy admirer. Very diligent, but she does seem a little nervous and tense. I imagine she has her work cut up. An extraordinary woman. Talented, intellectual, extremely rich, and the most successful writer of all time. Yet, they say she can be difficult on occasion. Butterscotch. I've loved them since I was a child. Their only drawback, they don't play nice with false teeth. I suppose the steward won't object to me having a look around in his absence. The steward probably uses the scissors on hard-to-open packages. These days, nearly everything is sealed up tight. A car pad on which the steward writes empty. Maybe he didn't use it. I don't need the pad, but the pencil might come in handy. Perhaps he keeps the compartment locked. Hmm. Where could he be? A shortwave radio. It's amazing how small these things have Just suck it. I strongly suspect that the door is locked. No, it's open. Feathered fiend. Put the gun down, Robert. If I may introduce Constable Robert Oliver from the Yard. And this is the revered Constable Zelda of the Swiss police, who obviously couldn't control his curiosity. you'll acknowledge that I, as a Swiss policeman, can undertake investigations in my own country. Are we still in Switzerland? I could be your eyes on the train, as long as you're here in the freight car. Oh, really? There is a certain Professor Lucien on the train. He's an archaeologist from London. And what's his story? Well, it seems someone locked him out of his compartment. Locked him out? Well, yes. The door is locked, and he's standing outside without a key. Was it locked from inside? It may have been. Hmm. Do you think the locked door could be important? Professor Lucien plays an important role in this story. Well then, Constable Zellner, be my eyes and ears on the train, and see that Professor Lucien gets back into his compartment. Report back to me when you're through. My pleasure, monsieur. Then I was right. You really do want to lure someone into a trap. That's none of your business. Perhaps that someone recently struck in London. And how would I bait my trap then? With something inside the safe? <laughs> someone hasn't done his homework. What do you know of this raven's heir? He tried to blow me up. Rob. We don't know who we're dealing with yet. In any event, the new Raven is a more dangerous man than the old one. How do you know it's a man? 
could just as easily be a woman. Or several men. And anyway, how do you know that it's a new raven? Monsieur? Never mind. I go attend to the door now. Good. And Constable Zell? Yes? Don't bother us, unless you have something new to report. Of course. A thief might get anxious if there's too much activity in the freight car. Exactly. Knock twice. Then we'll know that it's you. Understood. An investigation on behalf of a grant that takes me one step closer. If I can convince him of my competence, I might even be able to see this case through to the end. The ladder leads up to the roof. It will be suicidal to climb up there while the train is at full speed. The wind, the tunnels... No, I'll stay down here.